thanks especially for being here so late. I, I know, you know, beers are later, so um, hopefully this will be quick. Uh, that's me, Javier Miret. I'm a technical evangelist at AWS. That means that I speak to technical audiences about what's possible using cloud services, but today I'm going to be speaking not only about what you can do with AWS, but also about open source face recognition, a bit about the science or the algorithms uh, behind face recognition. So hopefully it will be interesting. And I have a few demos, and hopefully they will not break, and that will be even better. Uh, that's me on Twitter, SuperEcho9. If demos break, it's a good moment to take pictures of me crying, so that's uh, still quite interesting. And I'm going to be speaking about uh, facial recognition of a real-time video with the bonus of serverless, but that's you know just a different thing. So uh, I don't know, but if you're like me, when you were growing up, or maybe getting older, not maybe growing up, but when you were growing up, you saw movies about you know the future. For me, the future was like you know speaking to my watch or those things. That was like super cool. But actually, in 2002, this was basically the future. I don't know if you've seen this movie, uh, maybe. Uh, anyway, so this is a uh, minority report, and uh, this, yeah, this is not playing, but that's okay. So minority report, and this was like a very interesting part in which uh, Tom Cruise, he was like, you know, like moving along the city, and he was like getting like customized advertisements. You want a beer? You want whatever? And then he was entering a shop, and and they were like. Hey, uh, if you want, you can go to the right, which is where, where we have the clothes that you like. So that was like super cool. It was like real-time recommendations with face recognition, and that was like, you know, like kind of the future, yeah? And this was like, the first time I saw this was like, I don't know, it looks like a bit fake. Especially the blink in the eyes was like, I don't know. But actually, this is not a movie anymore. This is a, thank you. That's a supermarket in Seattle. So you go there, and you need, you need to be a member. So you need to first take a few pictures when you, re you register. But you enter the supermarket, you go there, you grab anything, you left the supermarket, and when you go, you get a message. Oh, you bought this, and we are going to charge you for that. That's about it. So you don't have to, you know, to stop at the cash register, or wait, or scan the items. That, that's so 20th century. So that's, that's for real. That's, you know, a supermarket that Amazon did the... the uh, the e-commerce, not Amazon Web Services, where different companies, they have in Seattle. And that works with face recognition and also with some sensors. But of course, it's not only fiction and only Amazon. This is in Korea. So in Korea, they have like this, like, you know, Korea is very big and they have a lot of people everywhere. So basically, if you try to go to a concert and you need to scan your ticket, it's going to take a while. Something you can do if you buy the ticket in advance, uh, you can scan your face and assign the face to the ticket at home. So when you go to the concert, you go through the, through the kiosk, and they say, oh, I know you are this person, and you have this ticket, so you can enter, and we already registered that this ticket has been used, so that's the, no, that works. Same thing if you go to some airports, that's in China. And uh, you go to the airport, you pass the, you know, the check-in, security, and at that moment, they take your picture. And then you can go to places like this, in which they are going to tell you, oh, cool. Your flight is waiting on gate E25, or whichever the gate. Which is, again, kind of cool. And that's in the wild. That's production. That's production ready. It's working. Or, again, China, you go there, you register for the system, and uh, you can just buy things without having to show any payment method because you already registered your face, and that's good enough. So this is just to show that there are a lot of use cases, interesting use cases, in production, that uh, in which people are using face recognition. And if you don't know about this, you might be thinking, OK, but they, mu they must be like very smart people that you know they are doing very cool things. As a developer, I tend to think they are better than me at searching that st Stack Overflow, because that, that's how I do things. So if you know what you are doing, it's actually very simple, very simple, to have this kind of systems today and you don't really need to be an expert machine learning. If you are, good for you. But you don't really need to be an expert machine learning for this. And there are a lot of use cases, interesting use cases in the wild, in production today, for machine learning uh, and face recognition. For example, uh, one, one that to me was very interesting. If you have some kind of gambling addiction, uh, you can actually tell the casinos, hey, you know, I like to gamble and so on, but I have this problem. So please don't let me enter your casino 
because I'm going to spend all my money, and it's good for you, but bad for me. And you can do this. And if you do that, they put you on a list, but it's very difficult to enforce that. Actually, now some people are using uh, face recognition to do this. You enter the casino, and you know the, the cameras are searching, and it's not for seeing who is trying to treat the casino, no. It's just for saying, oh, this person has a problem, and she told us that, you know, hey, don't let me play. So they can and they tell you, you remember you told us not to let you play? Come on, come on, here, here. And, and that's super cool. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. And then you have like the creepy people. Like if you are in the, you know, uh, dating site, you can upload a picture and tell, hey, I want people looking like this. I don't know, that's kind of weird, but you know, it works. So there are face recognition in a lot of places today in production, walking, this is not the future anymore. This is, you know, the, the, the things we are living in. So if you want to do something like this, hopefully not the dating site, but if you want to, to do any of these other um, use cases, I'm going to tell you, you know, how this is possible. So the thing is, it sounds kind of cool, at least to me, that uh, you can do face recognition in real time uh, and serverless, but we have only three problems. First, the video processing. Second, the face recognition and then doing the serverless. And it's kind of interesting. That's what I'm going to be talking about today, how you can use different things to actually make a system, a working system, in which you have real-time video recognition without having to manage any servers. And the first issue I'm going to talk about is facial recognition. And I don't know you, but uh, if someone asked me a few years ago, hey, I want you to do uh, something to detect faces in a picture, I don't know you, but I would have said, this is a hard problem. And, and it's actually hard. And if you tell someone which is not in software, they might be thinking, it's actually very simple. I don't know, that's a face. It's basic human thing. Yeah, you see a face, you know who that person is. But actually, it's, if you try to process images, it can be, as you all know, quite uh, intensive in processing. It's not an easy problem to, uh, to work with. So how we can do face detection, face recognition using a uh, software available today? Well, the first thing is differentiating between face detection and face recognition. So face detection is very easy. I take a picture and I tell the system, tell me if there's like any human, any face in the audience. And the system will say, yeah, approximately, I don't know, 25 people, I was expecting more people, but you know, like 40 people or something, but uh, I don't know who they are. But that's, you know, that's the first thing. If we are talking about recognition, it will be actually telling the system, given these two images or this image database and this picture, tell me if the person of interest is on the database. So there are two different problems, but in order to solve the second, first we need to go for the first one. First we need to understand if we have any face in the picture, and after that we are going to see if we can recognize who is in the picture. You're still with me here, yeah? Cool. So uh, the first problem, face detection, is actually simple enough. So if you want to do face detection, there are a lot of algorithms that have been used through the years to do these kind of things. Um, they can be more or less sophisticated, but in the end, they are quite similar. And some of the simple ones, actually, quite some of the simplistic ones are very simple. There is one, I, I, I will do a demo, it's called Hard Cascade. And in that one, basically, what we are thinking is, wait, 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 wait. I know this is a hard problem, but I already know that a face is usually, it's something with two eyes, and a nose in the middle, and a mouth, you know, and that, that's kind of a face. Maybe not for everybody. Some people will be like, ah, but I don't have two eyes. Ah, that's okay, that's okay, I get it. But for most people, you know, that, that should be good enough. And actually we know that the uh, shadows around the eyes are a different shade than the rest of the face, and so on and so forth. So a lot of systems, Sarkas case for example, what they do is like a quite simplistic algorithm in which we uh, train a system to detect those kind of patterns, just to detect if we can find something which is like kind of a square, and you know, the size is like the different, and then something vertical in between, and then something else. So something that looks approximately like, you know, like a face. So basically, we pixelate the image quite a lot, and we're trying to find the boxes matching that pattern. And that's simple enough, but it works. If you want to get fancier, you can do things like, you know, uh, DNS, so we can have like deep neural network to detect faces. It also works, but you know, with simple methods, actually finding faces is easy enough. There are then there are some slightly more sophisticated algorithms, and some that are not really sophisticated, but they work kind of. The skin color, 
It's like, yeah, it's sensitive because, you know, different people, different skin colors, I get that. But if you train a system with different shades of skin, then look at the proportion of how much skin you can see, it can try and detect if there's a human in the image. So the first problem, kind of simple enough. The second one, I'll tell you later, slightly more diffi difficult. So if you want to do a face detection system yourself, uh, and if you want to do it from scratch, because you know you are in big things in Spain, so you really like to spend time doing something that has been already done. I don't know. But if you want to do this from scratch, you can actually do it. Just take a few thousands, probably several thousand images, normalize them, choose the model you want to uh, use for this, hard cascade or whatever you want to use, train the system, and uh, that's it. You have a model that is working. And if you want to find uh, some face data sets for playing, there are plenty of them. Uh, you know, all the major players, Microsoft, Google, uh, Facebook, a lot of universities, they have released data sets with faces that are, some of them are playable, so you can play with them, and it's like, you know, you can uh, train your systems with that. Or you can try to do that in a bit easier way. So I'm going to show you the first uh, face detection thing. I'm going to be using an open source uh, library. Are you familiar with OpenCV? OpenCV is a Python library to work with anything with images. Not only for face detection, it can be used for anything else, but it's actually simple enough. So I'm going to start a Jupyter notebook. Jupyter... Typing is not easy. Cool. Okay, so I have here one example of face detection using OpenCV. And that's all the code you need. Actually, we have a lot of code here. We don't need that many code for this. So the first thing is you import the library. It works and it has you know, some models already. Then I will tell you more about this uh, function in a second. And then here we are doing two things. I'm going to be loading the model, the data, of the hard cascade model, the one I told you that uh, models a face based on the distance uh, uh, between the eyes and the color set around the eyes and the nose and so on. So I'm going to be using this model with uh, this, this algorithm with two models. One, the one for detecting a face in general and another one for a face with glasses because you know I wear glasses and make things slightly different. So I'm going to be loading this. So I just point the system to my XML with the, uh, with the model coordinates. I start the webcam. This will start, and then I'm just calling this function. This function has a lot of things. The first thing is I need to normalize the image because when I was training the model, when this model was trained, the hard cascade, uh, it was trained with images that were uh, gray scale. So I need to convert to gray scale because otherwise the model is not going to detect very well. So I need to first convert to gray scale. And once I have that, all I'm doing here is just saying detect as many faces as you can on the, uh, on the video. And for each face, I'm just going to be drawing a square around. But that, that's all I'm doing. So here, this is started. And it's saying, oh, it looks like a face. OK, not really perfect, but, but you get the idea, yeah? It's like, oh, this looks like a face. Yeah, kind of. I don't know. Maybe the light, maybe not. And if I point this to my image on the video, it also, can you see there? It says like a lot of faces here. It's all, but, but that's the thing. So it's, it's pretty simple. It's like, it seems there's a human. And it's very easy to trick this system. Actually, very often, if I point this to my t-shirt, it's going to be trying to find things where they are known. But you, you get the idea, yeah? So these kind of systems are actually very sensitive to things like the lightning, different, the different, some different lights, uh, you know? Or if I, if I do something like this, I'm not a human anymore. Because it's like, oh, where are the eyes? Where is the nose? I don't know. So these, are, these systems are very cool for working with faces which are looking you know, forward and with the light, which is like you know, not really many shades, not many contrasts, but they work. So OpenCV is used very often in places like industrial environments, not really for face recognition, but for doing quality control using video. Because in those uh, environments, you have like a very controlled set in which you can actually control the lightning, you can actually control many things. But as you can see, if you have the libraries and the models, it's pretty simple. So this is just with open source, and, and you can just you know, uh, restart. 
And you can just do that, and it works out of the box, nothing to do. OK, we are good to go. Oh, I didn't want to do that. That's OK. Hopefully, it will disappear. Cool. So this is if you want to do just you know, something open source, simple enough. There is another way to do face detection, which is slightly easier, which is just calling an API. So if you're using AWS, we have a service called recognition. I'll tell you a bit more about recognition in a moment. But with recognition, you can actually call an API and say, this is my image. Tell me if you, have, if you can find any face. And it will tell me things about the face. It will tell me things like, this is where you have the, I don't know, the, um, the tip of the nose, this is the left corner of the eye, the right corner of the eye, this is like, you know, the, the left part of the, of the upper lip, blah, 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 blah. And with that, you can do interesting things. Once you have a face and the coordinates, you can make a simple application to put, I don't know, hats or mustache on, on top of the people. And it's like, I don't know, that sounds like a pretty stupid application. Yeah, that's a Snapchat, and it makes billions on people just putting hats and things on top of, and glasses on top of the image. So, you know, you, you can actually do that in a very simple way. But, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, you cannot see it. On my screen, I have something saying I don't have any updates to, you know, to do. So that's, that's one thing. But uh, we are going to do something slightly a bit better. Because I told you face detection is easy enough. But face recognition is where the things get more interesting. It's like, OK, how can I go from I know there is a face somewhere here to I know who this person is? And yes, unfortunately, right now, you still need to tell the, the system beforehand the people you want to look after. I have a friend here in the audience. He was telling me, but if I, ha if I had to tell you before, the people that are in the system, that's tricky. OK, it's not that smart. But the thing is, how you do face recognition? The first thing we do is we find the, the face itself. And then we take that square with the face. Because applying you know, any kind of algorithm on a small part of the image is much easier than applying to the whole image. Second thing is all the algorithms, and there are plenty, they try to do the same thing. They try to convert that image into some vector that conveys as much information as possible uh, of a face. So the first algorithms, eigenfaces, which has been around forever, it tries to do this you know, in, a, in a more traditional way. New algorithms, like the uh, open face, which is based actually on uh, Google algorithms, but it's open source, they do this with neural networks. But in the end, all of them, what they try to do is try to find the things, the landmarks of the face the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, and they put a vector. So hopefully, if I have my face in one picture and that vector, and I have several images of my face, the vector will be always the same, because the, the relative position and shape of my main features, the landmarks of the face, they are always the same. So basically, all the algorithms try to do the uh, reduction to a vector. And once I have the vector, then I can try to do something interesting. The cool thing about neural networks, for example, open face, is that they can actually reduce the, uh, the vector for any face to around 128 bytes. So with 128 bytes, I can have a very small vector to represent any face. And that's important, because all the algorithms, they will need more space to represent the information of a face. And if you have more space and you have tens of thousands of faces, it's going to be slower to, uh, you know, to train and to detect. So the cool thing about neural networks, since they take into combination all the convolutions, they can actually reduce to a smaller shape, which is really the, the innovation that we have seen with neural networks lately. Once you have the faces reduced to a vector, we are talking about a classification problem, a very simple classification problem. I know this vector is this person. This vector is the same person. This vector is this other person. So once you have the vectors, it's just classification. And you can do classification with anything. In this case, you can, you can actually use SVN, you can use XGBoost, you could use a deep neural network to do classification. But once you have the reduction to the vector, you can classify in a very simple way. That sounds kind of easy enough. I don't know. And, and you could actually try and do that yourself. But what I'm going to tell you is like how you can do this without needing to uh, use these uh, models yourself. But if you want to, open face is open source. You can use it. You have open face for the model. You have the face data set, so you could play with that, and you could get good results. But I don't have the time for that. I want to do something a bit more interesting. So I'm going to do oh, a small demo, sorry, a small demo of uh, 
recognition for face detection. Let me just for a second, uh, when I have this, recognition, cool. So, oh, this is the one I told you at the beginning that you can just, you know, here, just get the different landmarks of one face, which is not that interesting. But I'm going to go to this one, which is the one I want to show you. So here with recognition, I can upload two pictures. So here I'm going to be uploading. Uh, let me see where I have this. Uh, here it is. So this will be, that's an image of a conference in which I spoke a few uh, months ago. And hopefully, when it loads. So it's telling me this girl is not is no uh, is no one on the other picture that makes sense so i'm going to upload a picture of myself with the queen of england uh, i was getting british citizenship so as you can see there it's telling me okay it looks that in these two pictures this person and this person is the same i 99.4 uh sure that they are the same person, which is true. I mean, uh, it's me. And we recommend, by the way, never go below 90, uh, sorry, 99%. And in some cases, don't go below 99.5%, depending what you are doing. But in this case, the system is telling me, this seems to be you, and you are not this, you are not this, you are not this, and thankfully, I'm not that person. So, you know, it's like, okay, it works. But I'm going to do something slightly more interesting. This is a picture of me and my school friends 37 years ago. Humans, can you recognize me in this picture? Who would you say I am? A machine is about to beat you. Who am I in the picture? Any takers? Even my friends, any takers over there? No, and you know me, and you know me for years. Who is me in the picture? You don't know, you don't know. Of course you don't know. I mean, I would have seen this one because it has a bear, so it's like, hey, it's, it's too tall, I know. But for the face, it might be me. But it's, it's not me, it's not me. So, so, yeah, no one? Cool, that's okay. Let's see if recognition can, <laughs> can tell me. So if, if, if he knows who is me, I should have here, when I upload the picture, a result telling me I am 90-something percent, uh, percent sure that this is you. 37 years ago, let me see. Let's see if this is working. Let's see if we have to be scared or not. So, uh, come on, come on, say it's me, say something. Uh, oh, what happened? It's like, oh no. Yeah, sad, yeah? But, but, let's look at the JSON, because this is not a marketing event, it is a technical event. So let's look at the JSON, and let's see what's happened here. It's telling me first, it's saying, well, I'm pretty sure it was a face in the first picture. That's cool. There was a face in the, same, in the first picture. Then, for the first face that I, I, I told you, you are not that person, I was 53% sure that you could be that person, but I wasn't sure. It was only 53%. For the second face, it's actually telling me it's only 28%, and the third one is 27%, and yes, this, this guy here with the dreamy eyes and the petete sweater, that's me, that's me. It's only 58% sure, but it's much more sure than about the others, which is like, not too bad, yeah, yeah? So that's kind of the thing. 37 years ago, and we could argue, I, I look slightly different now. I mean, my eyes are closed, uh, I don't know wearing glasses, I don't know, yeah, they, they, I, I need a haircut in both pictures, that's, that's for real. But you know, other than that, uh, the similarity is like, I don't know. So that's what we're talking about. You can implement these things, actually, just yes, with an API call today, which is kind of interesting. But uh, still, like, okay, Javier, this can be, it's a, it's a nice trick or whatever. But uh, we want to talk about, you know, video and about other things. So just before we get there, uh, how you work with recognition. The first thing you do, you create a face library. So basically you upload 
a few pictures of, of each uh, person, and you really don't need, ma you don't need many pictures. So if you want to recognize someone, you upload a few pictures, two or three should be enough for many cases. So you upload a few pictures of one individual and you label the pictures. This picture is this person, this is this person. So you put an ID, a name, whatever you want to put there. And then you ask recognition, can you recognize anyone in this picture? And that's how it works. But what if we want to do this over real-time video, which is the, uh, the, what I wanted to demo today. So for real-time video, because you know, if we want to do like a movie, like uh, you, know, you want to track Will Smith going into the underground, and uh, the, the suspect is I don't know where. So you need to have like a lot of video cameras and so on. So basically, the thing with real-time video is like you are going to have CCTV, several cameras somewhere. You need to be able to aggregate the, uh, you know, the content of the cameras. You need to be able to process that somehow. If the system is getting a hit uh, you know, detecting someone, you totally want to be able to replay the video. So you can actually, because if the system is telling me the suspect is, I don't know, in which platform, I might go to the video and actually check, oh no, it's not that person. Or maybe it is, I don't know. But you want to replay the video, be able to check if something is there. And, uh, and you want to do that in, in different devices. So trying to do that, you know, it might be already, it's, it's not especially difficult, but you probably don't have the in-house knowledge to work with a streaming video and to do those things and where you store the video and how you replay. So the good news is there is one service we have, which is Kinesis Video Streams, which is specialized on this kind of thing. It's specialized on getting video feeds from different places if you want to do analytics. In this case, we're going to apply it to machine learning, but it will be for anything. Actually, it works not only with video, it also works with audio and with radar. But anything that you have a signal and you want to do real-time analytics, you can use video streams for that, and it works, and it's fully uh, serverless. So the cool thing about video streams and recognition is that they are very well integrated. So on Kinesis video streams, I can, actually on recognition, I can create what we call a processor, which points the recognition library. Sorry, I was boring. So it points the, uh, you know, yeah, I know, I know I have that problem. It's not the first time. So uh, it points recognition, your face library, to the video stream that you choose from Kinesis. And once you have that, you know, it works automatically. I'm going to have the demo in a bit. But before we got there, part of this uh, talk was about doing this serverless. Because the cool thing, I mean, if you are in business today, the single most important skill you can have is producing value. So that's, that's it. It's not about, oh, what's the most important skill? I don't know, I really, I know a Spark, that's cute. I know machine learning, that's cute. But you really need to, you know, to produce value and do things as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And that's where serverless, you know, comes into. So serverless is one of the buzzwords of, you know, lately. And, and serverless doesn't mean that they are not servers. Of course they are servers, but you don't have to worry about them. So serverless means is someone else's problem, it's not my problem. So serverless means you can deploy your solution, and since you don't have access to the servers, you don't have to worry about how to scale them. The service will be able to scale up and down, because it's not your problem. I mean, the serverless provider doesn't give you access to connect to your machine, so they have to, you know, somehow manage scalability on their own because you, don't, you cannot do it. Same thing for security. If it's serverless, it means I cannot connect to apply a security patch. So the, the provider needs to take, care of the, uh, to, take a, sorry, to take care of that part also. Serverless also means, okay, so if I cannot connect to anything, and if it's going to scale automatically, if I'm not using the service, I'm not paying anything. That's right. That's data from serverless. You don't have usage, you don't pay. You have a lot of hits, you pay more. But that's kind of the thing. From serverless, you can actually do, you know, uh, work a bit better. And since we, are, we cannot manage the servers, if there is an issue, the provider should be able to work with that. So the way the CTO of Amazon puts this is there is no server easier to manage than no server. So if I don't have any servers, that's it. I don't have to, you know, I can focus on other things. So basically, you are able to produce things faster. You are able to innovate faster. You are able to just focus on the things that make your business unique and forget about this, the easy things like, oh, we are getting a lot of hits. We need more processing power. That's cute. We are running out of hard drive. We need to add more hard drive. That's OK. Those things, you don't need to have like someone specifically for that. So serverless means that you can actually do this you know, without having to worry. And when we talk about serverless, 
Sometimes people speak about serverless only on the context of serverless functions, but serverless can be applied to any part of the stack. Today, we have serverless databases. They disconnect when no one is using them. They scale to as much as you need when you uh, use them. We have serverless data lakes. You can do big data on serverless, uh, you know, things that, the kind of things you will do with Hive, you can actually do with serverless technologies in which you only pay for the, when you are running queries. When you are not running any queries, you don't pay for anything. It can also be applied to message queues. It can be applied to uh, API management. It can be applied to any part of the stack. So for my particular example, the one about video recognition, I'm going to be using serverless at many different points. First, I'm going to be using Kinesis video streams for processing the video feed. Once uh, the video feed is, is uh, entering Kinesis video streams, recognition will try to see if there is any faces, so face detection first, and second, if any of the faces are from any of the persons I have on the library. Then, if something, if there is any match, or if there is like any face, even if it's unknown on the feed, recognition will send a message to a message queue. And that message queue, it's again going to be a serverless message queue. In this case, it's called Kinesis Data Streams, which is something similar to Kafka. So it's just a message queue. We are going to have a Lambda function, which is listening to that queue. So if there is an event, it's going to do whatever we do with the message. And in this case, what I want to do is just send a post somewhere. So I'm going to be putting that into another notification service, which is going to be calling an HTTP post. So a lot of different things just to not manage any servers. But with this, I'm going to be able to have like a fully managed solution to, uh, you know, to work with this. It, it looks a bit nicer with this. So the webcam is going to be my laptop webcam. From here, I go to Kinesis video streams. Recognition will be uh, reading from the feed of the video. And I told you real time, I was lying. It's going to be about a five second delay. So if five seconds is real time for you, this is real time. If five seconds is not real time, then this is kind of batch. But this is five seconds delay. So recognition is going to do that. It's going to be using the face collection we have on the library. From there, if there is a match, it's going to be the message queue. We'll have a function. I believe it's in Python. Might be JavaScript. I believe it's Python. We have a Python which is uh, just passing the message and sending it not to a cell phone, but to an HTTP endpoint. That's kind of the idea. So let's, let's look at this. You have actually the code available if you want to play with that. And if you want to deploy, it uh, pretty much work with one click. But I'm going to show you all of this working, hopefully. So first things first. If I go here to my interface, I have something called Kinesis Video Streams which has uh, a stream here, which right now is not streaming anything because I'm not sending any data from the webcam, and that's what we have. I told you, let me just stop Jupyter and make this bigger. Cool. So I told you in order to work with recognition, we need to have a collection of faces. So here you have a connection, which is called Facial recognition demo, and uh, if I want to see, I not typing okay. That's okay. List. Okay. So here I can see these are the faces that I have indexed. So basically, I can see we, I have only three images on my library, and the three images are on myself. The first image is me, and the system is. 99, 99% sure that it was me on that picture. The second picture is, uh, so this is the first one, yeah. And the label is Javier. The second one is again me. And the label is again Javier. And in this case, the system was 100% sure it was me when I upload the picture. And the third picture, it's uh, again Javier, 100% match. I have only three images. And with three images, I'm going to see if when I move around the video, this works. And actually, I took this, these pictures a long time ago, a few months ago, and it should work. So I have this, and I told you also I need to have something called, uh, uh, it was there, the stream processors. So I have here an stream processor, which is a stop. So I'm going to start it. Start. OK, if I describe now the state professor, it will tell me 
this is already started. So now all the infrastructure will be there for me to send the feed. What will happen is, so I have Kinesis video streams, I have the steam processor. If there is a match, what will happen? I st and I still not, I still didn't start the, the webcam, and I'm still not sending anything. But just for you to see the, the, the whole picture, all the pieces. If there is any match, we have something called uh, data stream, which is similar to Kafka, a message queue, in which you can see for the last hour, I've been doing some tests to make sure this was working. So it will be just sending messages to a message queue. And for this message queue, I have a very simple Python function, very simple Python function, serverless. On serverless functions, you pay, you pay only for how many milliseconds a function has been executing. So here I have a function which I can see is reading from the Kinesis data stream. And this is the code. It's just very easy. Uh, yeah, this is actually JavaScript. So it's very easy code. Everything I'm doing here is like, if I'm getting any heat, I will be getting a JSON with the content of the heat. So I'm just getting the image from the, the content from the JSON, sorry. And I have on the JSON two objects, the matched faces and the faces that I recognize, but I don't know who they are. So I'm going to be putting that, uh, I'm going to be just counting. I'm going to be, uh, I have here just for each face I know, I'm going to say who is. And for each face I don't know, I'm going to see it was not this person. I send this to a message queue. And again, this is a bit more complex than it's tool, but it's just for you to see that there are many things you can do with serverless. And here I can see that this uh, message queue is going to be sending data to some HTTP endpoint, which is, let me just copy this. So I have this endpoint here, oh, which right now is not getting any data. Oh, I'm going to delete the history because this was from the demos. So I have this endpoint, and right now we are not sending any data because I didn't start the camera. That's kind of the idea, but that, those are all the pieces. Okay, no servers, no anything, just code and things that talk to each other. So now I'm going to start the camera. So this is starting and now we start sending data. And right now there is no one here, so you know it's not going to say anything. But if I put myself here and if I go to Kinesis Video Streams again, uh, where I have it, Kinesis Video Streams, where are you? Here. If I go to my stream, First thing is, I should see here data already. Uh, the image, should, okay. So this is the image with a little delay, but that's basically the image. So this is what I, and of course I could like know, go back and forward, as you can see here, so I can play with the stream and move back and forward, and this is just me collecting the video. The interesting bit is that if everything goes well, I should be getting here hits telling me, I'm 100% secure, this, sure, this is Javier. And then we can do things like, Let me see if this works. If I point this to you, let me see for a second. So this is with some delay, but hopefully after a bit, actually with a lot of delay now, it looks like 30 seconds, not five. But anyway, what can I say? But hopefully after a little bit, it will catch up. I don't know if it's, the, oh yeah. And we'll see with the light if it can detect something, but I'm not sure. So let me see if I go to the other tab, which is tricky to do. So if it can detect someone with this light, it should tell me, I can see people, but I just don't know who they are. Come on, detect someone. As I said, you know, with this, uh, in this light and the laptop like that, it might not be working pretty well. And the thing is, if I disconnect from here, it's not going to. But if someone wants to come here, like, you know, just to put here and, and see that it's actually someone there. Oops. If I put myself here back on the video, it will say, oh, yeah. Oh, what a no person on the video. OK, it's, it's now catching up. So it can already see people. And hopefully, at some point, it's like, oh, Javier again. But that's the thing. It can, no? it can find 
one unknown person, it can find uh, maybe something like that. We'll see more people, but that's the idea. So you are getting in almost real time, like you know, the feed from what's happening here, which was uh, what we wanted to get from the presentation. And as you could see, to do this, all we have to do was uh, starting the feed, just sending some, uh, you know, just uh, writing some function to uh, parse the event and do whatever we want with that. In my case, I'm just putting this on a HTTP endpoint, but you could use it for absolutely anything you wanted. As of today, oh, actually now, oh, now I could see, like, you know, I could see it to people, you know, so it, it's a bit behind the times, but uh, it's, it's still, like, you know, working there. So uh, if you want to use this, use this today, the SDK is available in Java and C++ and also for Android, so you can, you know, play with that a little bit. And uh, recognition is available on any, uh, you know, on any platform, but the streaming part, just the streaming part, is available only on those platforms. And uh, that's, that's basically what I had. What I wanted to leave you with is, if you don't know that this is possible, and you can actually implement that in a very simple way on your application without having to really understand machine learning, without really having to manage any servers. You might be thinking that this is the future, but actually, you know, in the meantime, other people are using this already for interesting use cases. And the second thing is, I know this is sensitive, uh, you know, material. I know face recognition, it's kind of, you know, so use it for good. I, just this week, I saw some news, very cool. Actually, I'm going to see if I can find it here. I know I'm already over the time, but just for a second. Uh, I saw the other day uh, face recognition protest Washington recognition Amazon. Let's see if it's there. Cool. So, man. Okay. So these people, these are privacy, privacy concerned people in the US is completely, completely legal. Oh, you cannot see. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I will tell you if you cannot see, I, I'm going just to disconnect and connect again. Cool, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I, I, just, I just searched on the, on the internet something. It's, it's a basic skill. You just Google and you get results. So yeah, so uh, it was, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. So basically, uh, these people are privacy you know, uh, aware people. And in the US, it's completely legal to be in a public place, scanning, you know, recording the faces of people. And, and these protesters, they wanted to raise awareness of this issue. So basically, they put themselves, this, self, this happened last week. They put themselves this, this phones here. They're using recognition the same library I just told you, and they feed the system first with faces of politicians and press from the US, and they were uh, in front of the White House, just, you know, just watching people come by, and, and then if they were getting like any hits, the politicians could see on the screen, we know who you are. So they would be aware that actually this is a sensitive thing. So maybe we need some legislation, maybe not, but you know, that's kind of the thing. It's actually very simple to do, it's, it's, it's kind of cool, that they were protesting against recognition, and they are using recognition for, you know, for doing the protest. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's also been proven for activists. But uh, I, I fully agree. When you are working with these kind of things, you need to be aware that, you know, there, there are some limits of the things you should be doing, even if technically it's possible. So that's what I wanted. If you have, like, any feedback or any questions or anything, that's my Twitter, and I'm going to be around for the rest of the afternoon. So thank you very much for being here.